so uh, welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be focusing on uh, we're going to be focusing on creating uh, this digital painting of Gary, Gary V as you can see I've already started with the sketch and with this I'm using the grid system to sketch out uh, the silhouette uh, his silhouette first and then go in deep I'll be explaining how I'm going about with this but the reason why I'm using the grid system is because as well I'm still learning about proportions and I, I want to kind of know what I'm doing before I can begin venturing out I look at sketching using the grid system as for example if you are doing let me say uh, let's let's imagine you you're riding a bike ride you start out not by immediately riding the bike on two wheels first of all you're going to maybe get a support for example if you're very very young you're going to have like those two wheeler supports and on there so like they help you gain balance so if you're a little bit old you may get a friend to to hold you around and then help you compensate for the for, for the balance as you get your head around it so this is the same thing that i'm doing when i when i'm using the grid system hopefully with time i'll be able to learn how to sketch properly with with proportions and and form and stuff like that but i'm keeping on practicing every day just as i've always been practicing with painting and i know that i will get there soon so when you're creating a grid system it's as simple as the image on the right with his image okay so what i'm doing with a grid system i get the image on her on the right and then I first of all lay out my grids using maybe my my brush tool and I lay out different proportions and then I after that I go and in the image section and I duplicate the image so once once you do that you know I now delete out the image in the duplicate and that's on the right that's what you see now that I'm painting on of course there are many ways of sketching some people can decide to just trace over it so you can just decide to trace over whatever you choose for for those who are experienced and when you have a lot of uh, you've done a lot of practice and you've understood how form works and you you can then try uh, ideas of like maybe trying to sketch from uh, like if you understand how proportions work then you can try doing that as well and also i can try sketching from uh, using proportions but then it would take also a very very long time because for me it could take up to three hours just to sketch this so this painting has been kind of sped up the the whole process took me about 12 hours to sketch from sketching to finishing so i don't i don't think that uh, it would be fair for you to for me to give you 12 hours of content just you see me going through the dynamics of trying to create the sketch and then uh going a uh, creating the various brushes but what i've what i've decided to do is i'm going to focus on the on the important parts like showing you how i'm sketching explaining why i'm doing what i'm doing and also i uh, i will be going making a follow-up video where i'll be explaining things like creating brushes like that if you're interested you can watch that but I'll also leave the brushes in the description down below so that you can check that out. When I'm sketching the eyes, I'm also kind of looking for ideas and uh, I'm trying to keep in mind 
how the IA structure is, you this will be this will become much much clear when when I'm painting. You'll be seeing me checking maybe OBS and stuff. That's because when I was painting, my uh, my laptop has RAM issues, so I uh, I always had to make sure that OBS was still running because for multiple times it was crashing and then. So yeah, I had to keep to, to make sure that it was it was okay. Okay, so for the for this, you can see now here when you're sketching, I put too much emphasis on trying to get to nail the proportions. So what ended up happening is I I ended up making his face uh, lean, or because when if you see Gary's face is actually a little bit round, so. When when you when you're doing that, see try if 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 it works, that's 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 a problem that I faced when I was uh, trying to do this because what ended up happening is the final product came out slightly off. If you can go, if you want to see how it looked like, uh, you can go check out my Instagram at James underscore SKJ you'll be able to see the painting and the finished uh, painting that I did but you you may find that it's a slightly off because because I tried to keep proportions in check and then I forgot to, to make his face round because I thought I could fix that during the painting session okay so maybe that's something you can keep in mind also and uh, apart from that you don't need too much to worry too much so you can see that I'm trying to adjust things like the mouth so when I'm painting I'm I'm blocking out shapes I'm I'm, I'm like I'm not going to to paint ever I'm not going to paint during the sketching phase I'm first of all making a sketch and then laying out various proportions where uh, maybe let me imagine that the, the dark areas i want to kind of lightly shed them as you may see there in the corner of the mouth and under the teeth i've kind of shaded them because i want i want that area to be kind of you know uh a little bit uh, better it, it it will show me what where i need to shed and how much where i need to make dark and light so yeah so when once once here you have you once you have your your proportions your your sketch right you then want to go back in and do some little bit of fine tuning at this point the sketch for me i don't try to focus too much on the sketch because when i'm doing this if i know that i'm going to paint i don't try to make the paint the the, the sketch as real as possible because actually what makes if you do a pencil drawing like this, what actually makes the sketch uh, real is the interaction of the lights and shadows. So that's why you see there is a tremendous difference between Garvey, uh, the paint, the, the sketch that I've done now, and the sketch that's going to come out after the painting. There is a oh, there is a, a difference between the painting now. Sorry the there is a difference between the sketch and the actual photo because I haven't begun rendering the lights and shadows and the highlights. When I do that, then you begin to get the sense of, uh, you begin to visually communicate things. So once, what, what now you're seeing here is me uh, trying to make a, a, with my pen, with a pen tool, I try to make a selection around his face because uh, this is going to help me when I'm blocking in the local color because what I want to do is uh, I want to paint over the, this painting but I don't want that painting to be to go all over the, the canvas so I want to keep it within this area so that's why I use my pen tool and kind of select around so that's what I've done and then I go and create a new layer called the local color so the local color is now the one that I'm putting and that's just 
my perceived color of the individual that I'm working on at this at particular time. That's that that accounts for the skin color, so the best color of the skin, maybe the best color of the clothes, or the best color of the material, the materials within the the composition that I'm working on. So that, for example, you'll see here, I'll paint, I'm painting in this orangish cotton color because uh, because he's, he's a white person, but I, the, I want to get out this, this idea. So then after, I'm also going to paint in the cloth color. So I have a feeling that this color is a little, this cloth is a little bit blue. So I'm going to go with the light blue, which is a little bit uh, desaturated because again, that's what I, I feel. It's it's very subjective. You can go with whatever you you feel like feels right to you, All right? And then I uh, for for so what this selection has helped me to do is that I can now paint uh, and and when I go to the edges, it doesn't go past the edges. So when you go to uh, so by the way the way you see the way to after when you finish uh, using the pen tool for example right and then you the path will be created but then you create a new layer on top and then with that layers you go and then select the path so you see the way it's been done here. Maybe I'll explain it in, in the follow-up video as well. So then when I'm done with this, now I'm going to begin laying in the first blend. So I've finished the local colors. Now here I'm laying in the first blends. Uh, so this, this will be when I render them, they'll appear as highlights and shadows and they will help to pull out and push back the faces and give me this uh, uh, this concept of volume to the face. Th this is where the face begins to to come together, and also so that's why you can uh, you can try to to observe and see how it works. So it's slowly but surely you begin, and don't don't get scared of. So you see there back there where I didn't apply on on his cheek below the the ear, right? I I hadn't applied the the highlights, and that ended up pushing the highlights over the canvas. So that's why I was creating the path in the first place. So again, as you may see now here, I am kind of rendering now the shadows. And I don't, I don't go drastic at the first, the, the first time because that's that's a little bit hard. You don't, you don't do that. What you do is you, if you're not very, very sure, you can create a new layer and then walk over it. Or else, you begin by layering in colors and let it build up. Kind of like you use a technique of uh, painters. When a painter, they, when they want to do something, I mean, you can do anything in art, right? So. When you, when if you're not sure of something, you begin by layering lay, uh, layers. By you use layers slowly. You begin using a darker color and then make it a little darker like that, now, until you get a result that you want. And then that part where you see, whenever I finish using those uh, blocking in the shapes, the highlights, for example, I get my brush tool sorry my smudge tool and then I have a blending brush again this is a technique that uh, I copied from uh, the paintings I found someone who showed me how who, who had a tutorial on how to create a blending brush and of course I created the blending brush and I'll leave it in the description below but otherwise I'll also make a tutorial on how to create your own blending brush so I'm here, I'm now rendering the eyes and shadows and whenever I I first of all block in the shapes and to blend them with the local colors, I just get my blending brush and switch on the smudge tool with a strength of about 16 and then I kind of let slightly go over it. Do not go over too much strength. So here my resolution was a little bit low so 
that made it not necessary to to blend the image but again you may see occasionally i go and get my smudge tool like now and i'm blending it uh, i'm kind of blending around those edges and kind of making it smooth and feel like there is something so now when you turn back you'll find like it's time it's it's now starting to get that realism of is this it that like this is a real eye it's kind of getting there it's not yet there but again it's getting there okay so uh, there are parts that i didn't put in this image of course like i said i'm still learning but for example the thing that i would have done better here is overall after the finishes i would have kind of gotten a, a brush and then uh, put the opacity less put it to multiply and just uh, increase the contrast in the shadows but i didn't do that it wasn't very very it, it wasn't a deal breaker but it was something to learn uh, a point that i can use to get better next time so keeping uh, when you keep going you now realize that this this part is beginning to feel like an eye section when i'm blending when i'm painting this is what i'm trying to do and, and the idea that i'm trying to to portray but by the way when you're painting you should it's visual communication right there are very many things when you're painting that you should be careful about because if you do a, a wrong painting it may be conceived it may be perceived in an entirely different way which will ruin everything for you so it's very important that you kind of know what you're painting and visually communicate that right so there, there are times for example when i'm painting someone holding a phone in their hands right if that that phone is supposed to look like a phone it's supposed to at the first glance if for example you give your painting to someone and they tell you what's that they're holding in their hands and you have to explain it i just know that that design doesn't work i just know that that painting is wrong Some, something is wrong with that painting for example here when in this painting the hand the way the hand is going across the chest i don't want my my viewers to kind of guess is he touching his body or is he uh, making a sick a, a, a hand gesture those are, those are the sort of things that I keep in, in mind and, and try not to overlook and try to give too much attention. So, so again here, there is nothing much going on apart from the idea that I'm blocking out the shapes. First of all, I get my local colors and I block out the shapes. You see, okay, another idea is when you're painting and you're going to paint the shadows, you you kind of get of course i'll explain this in in the tutorial uh, in the follow-up tutorials but when you're painting shadows and highlights you you want to or if you're painting for example a shadow area right you sample the best the the best color all right and then decrease the saturation like you're seeing me doing here and then reduce the the hue all right or you change the saturation values if you don't change the saturation values and just change the hue value this will make a plastic painting when you're painting uh, for example a a plastic let's say you're painting a cup that's perfectly fine you can do that but if you're painting uh human bodies human bodies are are organic they're not they're not plastics that's what that's what i keep in mind and the way i achieve that sense of softness or being organic i decrease my hue level the, i call uh, i picked this idea from somewhere uh, from someone of course again read ar around uh watch videos this idea is called hue hue shifting right if you go on my instagram and look at my paintings in uh my not my paintings my illustrations 
you will see that they are a little bit plastic, they are unrealistic, they are not real. Those were the illustrations that I was making in Adobe Illustrator and I wasn't hue shifting at all. To get that organic feel, you have to do a little bit of hue shifting where the process is you kind of get the color that you want to decrease the saturation values and if for example you want to create an highlight you, you sample the color that you want to increase the highlight and then increase the the, the saturation values to a uh, let's say a warmer tone all right slightly just slightly increase like that and then after after increasing then you increase the hue as well all right so that will make you will make it seem organic i don't know why it happens like that but uh that's a technique that some people don't use and they end up having terrible paintings of course there are very many things there there are there if there is a an artist called um i think she's called marika baunik on instagram her paintings aren't organically like the can see that for her what she's going for is she's not going for that realism she's she, she really wants that kind of feel like of that painting feel so her, her paintings will look like plastic and if that's what you're going for that's perfect because even when you go and look at her work it's truly amazing okay but if you're painting realism those are a few things you may want to do and don't get scared in uh, increasing contrast. The thing that I'm also still struggling with is uh, getting my contrast levels right. Because even though you, you may see here, I, I'm kind of doing a little bit better than I used to do a few months back. So you will see here, for example, the, the lip, the lower lip doesn't, uh, it, it looks like as if it's not really there so uh you will see now uh here i'm trying to block out block out those shapes and i'm blocking blocking out the highlights and shadows first and then i will get my smudge tool and i blend the colors together some people don't do this uh, there are very many techniques and i would really love to learn about other techniques even if you have other techniques please feel free to show me your techniques as well it will be awesome uh, but for me what i do now this blending gives me that softer look so if i'm doing if i want to create something organic that's how i'm going about it for now okay and when you're painting uh, for example this area this person gary v has beards around uh i couldn't kind of figure out where to get how to go about the beard thing but when you're painting again it, there is no single way to do anything so anything you do is right i'm going to just explain how i did my mine uh how how it is so first of all i i had to create a brush and then do a first uh, yeah so i created a new layer because i didn't know whether it would work or not so when you create a new layer uh you call it facial hair or something like that and then you begin experimenting so here this was an experimenting phase uh, and i was kind of blocking out the highlights and shadows but using uh, uh, an impression of a hair area until i was like i, I went and created the new brush and then started working with that brush right so this is all me still experimenting now here i've created a new brush and now i am painting over the areas uh, using that hair brush okay so again this this hair brush will be in the description down below and probably in the uh, in the follow-up video i'll also be teaching you how to create that brush as well so you have the blending brush the hair brush you have a couple of other brushes i'll be leaving them all for you you can get them you can download them and use them but um, if you want to create your own i'll also be doing a tutorial on that so so here i'm blocking out those shapes 
but you will see that they are just now seated on uh, a flat background because what actually is happening is uh, it's not the beards that are creating volume but it's rather the the I, the light interactions with those parts of with those parts because his skeleton is reflecting light differently and so those parts are creating shadows and highlights and for you to uh, to represent them you have to be able to get those highlights right so you will see that even if i've rendered the beards in it's still not it doesn't still feel right it, it still feels flat uh okay here i was going back in because the eye was giving something was wrong with it and i felt like i had to go back and do something so again don't feel don't don't get scared to experiment you just go back and uh Try to get things right you can't mess up even if you do mess up uh, you try to get back in line and in the process you learn a lot okay so um, here just doing some minor minor touches so you will see that I'm going all over the painting so I'm not going uh, I'm not going for example I'm not creating the eyes first and then the nose second and then no, I'm not following any specific order and I'll never do that maybe there are people who do that I don't know but for me what I feel is that when I'm painting I want to be able to look at uh, other parts of the face relative to what I'm creating because then that will help to put things in perspective if for example I was to create the eyes first and the nose first, it will give me a lot of hard time because I wouldn't know how my eyes are working proper so for example here when I finish putting in the beards then I, I saw that the eye was off so I went back in even though I'm not done with the beard area now to create volume I'm going to begin putting in the highlights and the shadows so here I'm doing a couple of adjustments based on what I want create a quick brush right there and then you go back in you go back right in and then try to put in those define the highlights using the hair so I'm I'm now creating volume okay so this is what I was talking about it since it feels flat now I'm using the shadows and highlights to explain to me that this part is kind of pushed back in or this part is raised out and the highlights and shadows will do that very very well okay so so this is this is where i was supposed to round out the face but i didn't round out the face right and it ended up giving him this look of like he he, he was a little bit lean which isn't the case so what i would have done is i would have put highlights on her on the side the side so the cheek area there i would have dropped some more highlights there and it would have corrected everything but again you learn and you grow you allow yourself to to grow like that so this again shadows highlights uh they help to kind of give that look of like this is what's going on here okay so you can see here there i had made a mistake and i even erased it so, so you, you you kind of and the best part is if you can uh, if you can watch if you can watch uh, time lapse videos most of us that even they don't talk right be able to understand what they are doing okay it will be very very helpful in, in you figuring out various things so that's how that's how I've learned for the most part there are some very good teachers and resources uh, like Prokopenko or the art of Aaron Blaze actually I watch Ar Aaron Blaze's channel and his live streams are um, much much more and I also go to the drawing database channel so you can go to those channels or your favorite channels and try to to draw from try to get ideas from there try to borrow techniques with what how they do their things okay for, for me for example i learned 
the local base color theme from uh, the art of Aaron Blaze, his channel. He was a Disney artist, he was a Disney animator, he worked with Disney for I think 20, 20 plus years and now he teaches, he gives out everything for, for, for literally for free. Things you may not understand from a, a pro artist, whatever, you, be, you may be able to understand from a beginning artist, okay? So for example, things you may not understand from Proko's channel or Aaron, Aaron Blaze's channel, you may be able to understand from my channel. So that's how, for me here, I'm not, I'm not like I've not been drawing for years I've only been painting for a few months not even months like less than two months okay so but it's important like for me when I make it's when I make something sometimes it I'm like how did I do this so documentation is also a very big thing if you can find a way of documenting your process if you make a mistake you can be able to go back and try to realize like this is this is what happened okay but there of course there is there is there are tons and tons of practice that go into the creation process sometimes you're not going to feel like you're getting it but try to tweak around and and find ideas because art is i, I look at art like nothing but an illusion so if you can all things uh, media or uh, visual communication so if if whatever you're trying to communicate is convincing to the eye then that's all you need and then from there it's nothing but a continuous improvement but anyway here we continue with now you see I'm rendering in the, the ears and of course you can see now there is no when you when I'm when I'm drawing when I'm rendering the ears I am not going in and using lines I'm using highlights and shadows that's all I'm doing even even in painting whatever paintings you will see that they're always using highlights and shadows okay if you are if you want to render light you want to create a horse it's just shadows highlights that's all okay there is this thing when you study science where it says that uh, we are able to see something because that thing is uh, for example you're able to see something as blue because that thing is is absorbing all colors and kind of reflecting blue okay so that's the thing it, it's a thing even here that's the same concept i'm using i'm able to see that his his hair is like this because that's how because of the light interactions with his hair okay so, so if you begin looking at art like that then you begin you, you begin understanding the dynamics of course you're not going to be a hundred percent correct all the time but you're going to be correct more times than you're going to be wrong so uh, you you just keep developing and then experimenting on the mistakes and becoming a little bit better each day so yeah so when it comes to uh, highlights and shadows again i've explained the concept i'll be maybe making a follow-up video for that but yeah so you will see that even though this picture you can see in the navigation window there even though the picture is coming together like i'm trying but it doesn't have like that uh what can i call it it doesn't have that true feeling of um, of realism not, not realism i'm saying it doesn't have that true contrast value because uh, i'm kind of using the color sparingly of course these are amateur problems uh, pro artists don't have these issues because they kind of they will, if you go and watch aaron's channel when he's working with colors he's not hesitant in using the colors and i am still struggling with uh, kind of coming up with the right colors to render so that's why you see that even though the shadows and highlights are there but they're a little bit reserved they're less 
they are less pronounced okay so again this is something that everyone you everyone faces it and you overcome it slowly by slowly so here you may see now who, when i was working with his hair i just used the the same brush that i used for the beards but i just tweaked around settings for it and made it work okay so because again i stopped looking at it as uh, for example here i wanted to now make to pull out that face like to make it to feel like there is some sort of bone there so that's why i was adding highlights um, so again you may now see now it, it's giving it that grayish texture like that like how his hair is in the photo so that's what i was trying to go for there okay so with my brushes and blending it all begins to come together so now you feel like there is some sort of light interaction there to me it's always testing that makes everything worth doing because if i test out something and it works very well then i'm happy if it doesn't work sometimes i'm sad and then i give it a break and then i come back fresh and new and then do it come up with a new idea and experiment and it works okay so there is it, art has nothing to do with talent it always has to be with you be, being willing to spend a little bit more time understanding dynamics of lights and shadows um, and trying to blend that with proportions of the, that exist in nature rendering the, the the hair again it's highlights and shadows but here i'm not going to explain to you because this part was wrong and uh, i had to do all with that because again here i was testing but i ended up finding out that actually this hair is seated on the head and not being the head so i don't know how to explain that kind of i wanted to make the head feel like it was going back but with that black thing on the with that black hair uh, rendering on top it felt like as if the head was going up towards the the topest part of the hair so that's why i deleted it i don't know and then with so i decided then to create the hair but then as you may see the way i'm making those strokes i'm making them go into back there right so it now it's now feeling like as if they are seated on something okay so that is what maybe started selling me the idea of yeah maybe there is something seated on on which the hair is seated right so that's why that's that's what i wanted but whereas in the first case there was nothing that wasn't happening it was just like as if the hair was kind of the head but going up and it was terrible so you will see now once i did that i now noticed that that part behind there was kind of over exaggerated and and, and i know soon you'll see that i'll, I'll kind of do with it because now it feels like as if the head is bigger at that that corner right there which is wrong but then i'll go away and do it with that so to make it blend i'm now introducing shadows again and i'm blending them so you will see now they have decreased the hair dramatically drastically not dramatically so I've decreased it now it feels like the head it's it feels now like real hair okay versus uh the other uh black uh real estate that i had put on the head which felt like as if the head was just going straight okay so now with highlights i'm now introducing highlights and i'm using those highlights to render hair okay and i'm bringing them slightly so again i have a custom hair brush and i'll be leaving that in the description below this one is kind of soft it's not like the same one I'm, i used for the beards for the beards it's kind of grunge it's kind of hard like but for this one even when you use it in normal painting you see you feel like it is really soft so i'll be showing you maybe how to create it as well 
and uh, i'll be also giving it to you or believing it in the description down below so you can take it create with it see how you can work with it but if you want to learn how to create your own the tutorial will be coming up okay so blending is very important and uh, so yeah so you will see now the face what you see now in the navigation window the face is almost trying to get there so i i'm now starting to feel a little bit happy with with how it's turning out to be it's not perfect because there are, there are some things that i don't know how to render properly but again what you don't know it doesn't stop you right some of the things that you don't know are going to be really uh, minor okay so for example if you want to create uh, a reflection of a tree in the eye of the person and you don't know how to do that it's, it's going to be minor so, so, so sometimes just dropping in a highlight it is going to help you get over the the frustration of not doing of not knowing what you're doing the highlights are done so I was, there, I was checking my to see you how it's working where, where the obvious hasn't crashed yet you'll forgive me it's because of my laptop and uh, so i normally i listen to podcasts whenever i'm doing this stuff so it doesn't so i don't get uh over buried in what i'm doing so when i'm painting in i'm i'm also switching on the sketch layer occasionally so now you can see the sketch layer is on because i want the i want the, to know where each place is so that i can know how to accurately render things like for example when you're rendering high uh, the nails again you're using highlights because the nails are going to reflect to that light for example the veins you're going to use highlights and shadows that's all i'm doing so here you're seeing it for example there the, that vein that comes like that now i've finished blocking in the the highlights now i'm blocking in the shadows and when you look at it you will see like as if they are real veins okay because that area of the the skin okay it's reflecting light differently from the areas around it and that's why we are able to see it as lights and shadows okay so the light hitting the light coming in from all those directions that's how that area is in uh interacting with that place so that's that's why i'm able to say that this is what i'm doing same goes for the nails i didn't want to always spend time creating the nails and uh at this point my laptop was also giving me a little bit of hard time but that doesn't mean that uh, that doesn't mean that you you give up sometimes you take a break and stuff like that so again that's what so you try to create realism if it's a hand if it's a try to create exactly what you see, because at first glance if someone looks at those veins and is like are those veins or are those what's that then you know that's wrong but for example here when you look at those veins you see that those are real that's that's a vein okay and you cannot mistake them. that's what you want to do in design in art that's what i try to actually focus on on this channel so here the highlights were kind of blown off so with my knowledge of proportions i was able to uh bring back my to bring around to, to, to like kind of bring back it's more of form here like kind of bring out re reconstruct that that part because but if i didn't know my form and proportions properly i would have gone and done something terrible and it would have looked unrealistic okay so i've used that technique even when i was doing another photo i'll pro probably post it in december you'll see it where i reconstructed the face of my friend because her, her she was backlit and her face was kind of washed out in and it was buried in shadows and i couldn't see most of some parts of the forehead in fact most of them 
so I used proportions uh, and how I know her so I used proportions to do that and it came out uh, perfectly well so again that's why I take these lessons and I try to learn and uh, be better so because if I cannot spend my I cannot say that I'm going to spend my entire time learning how to draw but I'm not going to spend it the entire time also drawing using grids okay so striking a balance is necessary so when it comes to rendering the the shot also again I'm blocking in first of all the shapes using a dark color all right um and also for the for for for, for the shape uh, and then I'm, I'm I'm getting those shadows and I'm playing around making different shape adjustments like that uh, and then I'm trying to render again all I'm doing is thinking about lights and shadows highlights and uh, and and shadows okay so you can see that occasionally I'm using that thing that selection tool we made in the beginning to help me get those crispy edges at the border so that's why I used the pen tool at the beginning because I knew that I would need that maybe there are better ways of doing this but yeah okay so you will see that if you try to follow the steps if you try to follow the highlights and shadows you're going to begin coming out with this realism of how the actual photo looks like it's kind of it works kind of like magic okay it's like it's 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 so cool I like it so for example here again I'm seeing that there is that the hem area I'm not looking at it as a, a shape or any I'm looking at it as light and shadow okay so even under the arm there where they there is there is a shadow cast by the shirt on the arm I'm just doing a shadow getting a shadow color and I'm using that and then getting my blending tool and using that shapes like this why you find that there when you're painting clothes for for very very thick clothes you're going to find that those areas the 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 creases are going to be a little bit much bigger right and then clothes like nylon clothes and they're going to be flowy and uh, and kind of smaller sometimes okay so those are things a few things you may you may want to keep in mind again i've spent a few months actually studying clothes there, there have been a very big fascination of mine i don't know i like i like doing clothes but because they they, they are hard for me to do and things that are hard are really um they're, they're, that's where i want to focus most of my time to try and figure out that that keeps me going okay so here when i'm doing the shadows i'm first of all going to concentrate on one part and block out the various shadows and highlights because for the most part most clothes unless you're like in an, a discotheque or something like that where like there are multiple lights of different hues but if you're in a situation like this where there are kind of uh, a light with one kind of hue okay the kind of light interactions are going to be kind of similar right so that's why i spent most of the time first uh rendering one area like the shoulder of the the person so if i get the shoulder right if i get the shoulder right then i can go to all other areas and then try to make them work really really well and it, this this has been really helpful for me so you you may see that even though in the in the shadows for example i i am trying to make them look real but here it was giving me a, a, a little bit of hard time because i had spent some time without working on the on the clothes but i soon got into my flow and uh, started rendering it out properly so sometimes i will i rarely use the blending brush when i'm rendering clothes but sometimes i would use it as well okay so you will see that how the local color is coming in handy okay so because i know that i'm going to be working with the local color so the highlights are going to be based on the local color okay, so i cannot bring in highlights of the face 
and I blend them on the on the shirt. That would be terrible unless you're creating a reflection. Actually, that was what I was supposed to do at that point where I was using highlights. So I should have used highlights from the from the shirt to mark the collar area because that was some subtle reflection there. But I kind of ignored that. And yeah, that's a mistake that I I have just seen now, now as well. But for the most part, for the shirt, the areas of the shirt, I'm sampling highlights from the shirt. You, see, you will see that even though they even though they are white, okay, they look white like the highlights in the face. They have a different hue of white. These ones are kind of bluish, whereas the highlights in the face are warm. They are, they are warm. They are like orange white okay that's what creates a realism otherwise you would have seen that it's not working right so even though here now i'm bringing in the highlights again from the face so not from the face from the best local color of the shirt so it's the use of the local color so you will see now here i try to explore different light variations and actually it didn't work so this part i won't spend too much time on it because i ended up uh, deleting this part because i wanted to kind of bring in that feel of like because this place was reflecting light differently i don't know why maybe there was some sort of secondary light somewhere but i don't know uh i couldn't see it because most of the shot was washed out but because of that purple or like violet hue I was trying to kind of replicate the same but then it was not working out for me and I decided to uh, try maybe seeing maybe if it can work but it didn't work so I dropped everything and started again using the normal shadows in the image that I had worked with earlier. So here you see that I'm even trying textures and I'm trying to texture it but it wasn't working. When I went back, I was like, no, so I dropped everything. And now I'm starting again, uh, but using now the hues of uh, this kind of now I'm bringing in again the same, but I'm, I'm, I'm dropping them a little, I'm lowering uh, the hue, but the saturation values so that it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like as if it's. Uh, a different color entirely of the shirt all i want is to render accurate reflections okay so if this doesn't feel like a reflection if it feels like part of the shirt then that's wrong because i know that this shirt is a uniform color it's not it's not a purple shirt so if i cannot get my uh reflections of the shadows and sorry of other lights right then i'm doing it wrong okay so yeah those are the things those are the things that you have to critique yourself before uh, we go and first first them first up to them then you'll be able to to learn and and grow on observation is very very important because if with when you observe then you'll be able to come up with very convincing renderings of whatever it is that you're trying to do okay so now moving on to the second so i was kind of happy with uh, this this part so now i decided to kind of move along the, the second part and this is where now it starts becoming interesting because now i notice that I didn't put in the, the arm there so I'm now trying to fidget to put it in uh, properly as well so I'm going to make sure that this feels like an arm so again using sketching you sketch out very very quickly so I switch on the sketching layer and now I'm sketching around to feel like it's going to feel like an arm and then I'm going to bring in my local colors and I paint in the arm, all right. So you, you begin painting in subtle things like like that, and and then it begins working. Okay. 
So now, now I'm getting the sample colors from the their hand because I know I noticed they're kind of similar. They have kind of a similar rendering, and then I'm I'm doing that, and I'm also now using the shadows and highlights from the earlier created renderings on the on the left side to create the the shadows and highlights okay so you feel you now begin feeling in so, so here when i'm when i get into my flow now when i'm blending normally i'm using the same layer to blend but if i'm not sure then i'll create a new layer and i'll blend upon that one here is where you i want to explain again the concept of realism when you're creating an illusion so what i want to do here is to create realistic shadows and highlights and if i cannot get that okay i don't want it to feel like there is some sort of insect in, on gary's arm area armpit area instead of realistic shadows okay so those are things that you have to keep in mind keep on so you can see that this feels like as if it's an insect there okay so you go in and fill in the shadows and highlights uh, properly you see that that shadow around there is not working well with its friends so i decided to drop it just try to work with what you have and what you can render very well and what you feel works best for you so here i can uh, achieve this by when you increase the contrast between the shadows and highlights you're going to begin you're going to start seeing that uh, the the that feeling of like realism is coming into play here i'm just dropping in the shadows of the arm and then blending them to create this feel of like this place is this arm is round it's 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 cylindrical right so yeah that's what i'm doing there so you can see now already that once you now start doing that now it feels like as if there is that's his arm so it feels like part of his arm now okay so and the more you go on and add in the shadows and then blend them it starts it continues to feel now right okay so when you zoom out you don't you don't mistake it for anything else other than his arm okay so this is what you want to do i'm going back here because i now i now need to render out this part of the that arm also that um uh, that the part uh, so the, the muscle area that that yeah so i'm getting the shadows and i'm sampling getting the shadow areas and i'm blending them with a local color and it's now already giving it that feel of realism now okay and here again i i kind of dropped the the vein that i i i could have rendered it but i kind of i don't know why i didn't see it you know, that's the thing sometimes you're not going to see some of the things i don't know why yeah that's a that's a point as long as you're you're on course you'll be fine Okay, and, uh, and and that's one thing that of course I'll I'll fix next time. Again, it it helps that you don't get too much into your you don't get you, you get out of your your head. So that's all that I uh, I had for you and uh, try to render out things. Try to be try to use try to understand what you're doing and uh, i'll leave it at this to, if you want to see how the final rendering came up around go check my instagram and you'll be able to see that okay so i'm gonna leave it at this go create store some be amazing till next time